Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Escolax Hour. This is 115, 115. It's Friday. It's what, what day is it today? Like the, the, the second. The second. It's the Third. second. The second. Thank you. June. 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 Damn, second. it's already like Fuck. The, the half the, the year. The yeah, month. it's like Christmas <laughs> already. Anyways, yeah, uh, the Escolax Hour. Uh, I'm Efrain. I'm Angel. And, and then this is Fifi. Fifi, the, the Fifi. I guess she got know, her nails done. The nails done and the light <laughs> host, you know, for all the other dogs, animals. There you go. We there. get creative even with the doggies. Nice. So yeah, uh, you know, it's Friday. We're gonna bring you some art, some uh, light painting, light painting interviews, and some local issues. Local issues and uh, anything where we can get creative. And you guys know the school X hour. Oh, and shout outs to uh, Always 323, Embroidery Kid, Jessica right. Interior Love, and everybody that's watching right now, 4 p.m. Yeah. And uh, yeah, who's on today? You want to tell us? Uh, today we have Diana, who's um, one of our local artists here in L.A. Diana. Hi. <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, do you have a... Don't so, leave me alone. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry about that. This is my first time hosting with side by side with the uh, school Locks Hour um, and Diana. Uh, today we are having her um, do a live painting, um, talk about uh, her growth and her achievements through art and how mm -hmm. she wants to push it through you know a more broader audience and just people at home, right? Correct. Yes. <laughs> so then, let's, let's take start. a seat and we'll begin. So today we have a couple of, of questions that you know we want we want to ask her. Right, the first one is um, here in LA. Where are you located at? So I live in K Town, Koreatown. Um, I've grew up there like almost my whole life. Right. Um, I basically lived in two cities in the valley because I went to high school in the valley. Right. And but I always lived in K Town, and I also grew up in downtown LA because my parents have their business there. Okay. So I've always been around there. Right. So you always um, taking part of what is it? How would you consider it LA's creative side? Because K Town has a lot to offer, right? It it's does. like it's like diverse culture. We have. Um, the Asian community, the Hispanic community, uh, it's just a, it's like a melting pot within, within a small, small sector of the, yeah. the city, right? Um, and compared to the valley and downtown, how would you, how would you determine where do you want to be located at? Like, what's your main area of, how do you stay in? Stay in. Um, well, staying in two different cities um, growing up. Um, I would say the downtown area or received by, you a lot more yeah, welcoming the city yeah, yeah it's more welcoming um, mostly because I grew up there in the sense of like I saw how it was more personal there right, um, more seeing personal. my parents grow um, their business and um, so I was more comfortable with people there right I right. mean I went to school over there because my parents thought it was more safe <laughs> um, but I would say like this this area okay back to the question um bringing bringing you into the city downtown k-town mm -hmm. um, has has the art within the city structure influenced um, your art as well 
Um, I would say a bit. A there, bit. there has to be the street art that kind of like not influenced me, but inspired me right. um, to to do my own art too. You right. know, and also the people that I've met in this side of town. Um, I don't want to say they're more artistic, but I've met more artists in this side of right. the area. So because of that, I've been influenced. Influenced, okay. Yeah. Um, one other question that I wanted to ask was, why the concept of universe and love for your art? So the whole universe started, um, I would say, around a year ago. Uh, I've always painted my whole life. Right. Uh, I've always changed. I always had like a different, um, uh, let's say it's like scene I always had like landscapes to animals and I would just stay there and yeah. I would just do oil painting okay so I don't know if it has happened to you where you have like this painter's block or you don't know what to draw anymore right. or paint anymore no exactly I, so you look for inspiration mm -hmm. you know so it started with one sketch I, I rarely sketch people at that time mm -hmm. so I sketched one of uh, a close friend mm -hmm. and I wanted a background for it. I didn't yeah. know what to do. Exactly. Right? So his face was just black and white. So I was thinking like, you know, what, what can bring his, this black and white, you know? So I How thought did, about like, it. How balance it, right? Because you yeah. just didn't want to leave it too blank. Yeah. I didn't want it to be too dark or just one plain color. I wanted a mixture. Mm -hmm. So, um, at the time, I would see movies that had to do with like space and stuff like that, and the galaxy and the stars. So I was like, I'm gonna do that. Right. So um, <laughs> I grabbed my watercolor and I just started painting the universe. And then from there, I was actually really surprised how well it came out. So I started doing more and more and more. Like it would be like stacks of like paintings of. Um, the universe All right yeah. and do you think this was one of the like the key factors of why you grew as an artist because the question to to go by it is what led you to to do art yeah I mean not just mm -hmm. drawing universe and love you know and, and combining it with you know with a what kind of like a design media to it you know mm -hmm. having a person's face and then having the background altered you know like you said right. you know putting the universe or putting stars or just the color you know concept like using the pinks the blues the purples mm -hmm. you know uh, or just blending them in into a sense that you you're not not so much structuring it but making it flow right, right? so how does all of this like push you more into pursuing art like where did it all just originate where began. did it begin and then how is it how does it come up to right now today yeah. um well the painting it all started i would say from high school okay um honestly it all came out from feelings um <laughs> you know everybody goes through stuff everybody right. goes through some people some write touch poetry it, right? you know so everybody has their way to cope right you know people go to music people write it people talk about it you know drink you know <laughs> exactly so um <laughs> i would actually in high school i had a painting class okay. and um in my assignments i would always finish first maybe because I, i've always been drawing since i was a little girl so okay. i don't want to say i'm good at it or i'm the best at it but I've always pushed myself to, to be good, good in my art, you right. know? So in my free time, I would just grab the brush and grab the paint right. and just start painting. And, um, but I would paint based off feelings that I had. I could be super happy, very, you know, down, very stressed. And, um, and I love the way the, the paint and the brush would go like it was a nice flow like very easy very mellow um and i would do so many like i would just give them to people i would do trees because i was like in love with trees back right. in high, my high school days um and then from there i picked up um, oil but i noticed that oil is beautiful to work with but right. it's very time consuming 
Right. So just letting it dry, letting yeah, just waiting, mixing the colors. Exactly, and, and it's a mess, and then you have to <laughs> clean the brushes. I know, and it's hard to even <laughs> get some of the paint out if you, if you put it on clothes yeah. and stuff like that. So it's, tell yeah. me about it. I have so many clothes to like throw away, not throw away. But now, now um, uh, uh, how would I put it? Um, everybody's like altering their clothes, right? Like mm. putting artwork. Yeah. Uh, you know, just making it into their own style like mm -hmm. like now you you're what you're doing with your artwork you, i mean you're you you combine something that that you were that you liked because i just heard you say and you like the flow of the paint you know like the, yeah. how the brush just kind of like smoothed it out right is it something that you still want to continue combining into your artwork mm -hmm. like you know going more into the in-depth just watercolor gouache you know just acrylic you know diluting it with water or do you want to go back to oil painting no so right now my favorite i guess medium would be watercolor, watercolor. that's it like <laughs> that's it. I, i'm not going anywhere like the high flow acrylics mm -hmm. they kind of work with um my watercolor because of the water base that has base, right. so it has kind of like the same concept but i mean i'll go probably go back to oil but i don't see myself doing it anytime <laughs> soon i feel like um the acrylics and the watercolor that I have, mm -hmm. they're faster for me to use and easier to control. Okay. Yeah. That's good, that's good. So. Um, that's good to hear, you know, because it's always what feels or what makes everybody more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't control it, some people just like just the splatter. We have, you know, Pollock, who is like a painter just like splats but Everywhere. it's like it's like a whole structural split. Yeah, you know I mean, like the feeling, the the texture, or just even mm -hmm. the concept of it. But for our next question is, <laughs> um, we'll bring it back to you, Dan. Okay. Um, is um, what what has been your experiences journey so far with painting and drawing, as in how how has it pushed you to you know just marketing your your paintings, not just as giving them out to your friends, to now you know becoming your own freelance artist? So, um, at first, I wouldn't sell them. I would just keep them. So, I would just buy the watercolor paper and I would just paint and keep painting until I had stacks, stacks. and stacks and stuff. <laughs> right. So, um, honestly, the only people that would see my art were close friends or family. Oh, That's okay. it. Like, I wouldn't show it to people because it was just like I said, it was um, paintings that I would do based off feelings. Um, so it was very personal to me, right. you know? So not having someone that would see it that didn't really know me was, I didn't know how to take that. Like the critique or just yeah. like how people would invoice it or if they would feel the same feeling exactly. that you have. Okay. So um, I would have so many that my, fam my brothers would tell me, um, you should do the art walks. Right. Go sell your art, you have so much of it. You know, and I was like, no, like, right. I don't want to do that. And um, my close friend, my best friend, she, she's an artist too. Okay. Um, she doesn't paint. She's mostly like uh, very crafty. Um, and she wanted to sell too on the art walks. So right. she's like, let's do it together. You know, so it's like. Let's venture out so it doesn't, you know, if we're both scared of it, well, let's be scared yeah, together kind so, of thing. Okay. So we tried it out. So uh, I was scared shitless you know mm. um i prepared all my art and i was nervous but also excited okay i didn't know what i was gonna get <laughs> you know um so i got out there put my table and my brothers were all helping me put my stuff out oh, you know that's good that's good you had and family as, as backup you know? yeah that's good there have yeah. been huge help um four brothers right. so wow. like i have a whole bunch of hands you know a <laughs> whole bunch of motivation um we put my table out and we're like, all right, let's see what happens, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, let's take a chance, you know? Yeah, just... I wasn't really there to sell it. I was just there for the feedback. Okay. To see what people had to That's say good. about my That's art. That's good, because a lot you know? of people, they, send, they tend to just get feedback from friends, colleagues, yeah. you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. you got it from an audience that, how do I put it, is unaware of what you, what, how long you've been doing it or, right. or how good you are. They, they just mm -hmm. saw an artwork and they were taken by it. You right. know what I mean? And I guess that's how um, the school like school hour, uh, you know, came about and yeah. it was able to meet you, right? Correct. So um, that's how it came to be. And then I made an Instagram for it because okay. 
I you thought. just started it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, and what's your handle? What's your Instagram handle? Or how so, do you go by it on Instagram? On Instagram is Eladani. Eladani. Eladani with four eyes at the end. Right. So the whole name came to be um, my best friend and I, we, I wanted to make an Instagram for my art. Okay. And I didn't know what name to put for it. Right. You know, it's so hard. It, it's hard, no, there's, so, it, there's so many too, right? Because people then, know you by that name. Right. So I was like, I don't want to just put Dana's art. Or right. I thought that was pretty lame. Cliche or something. Yeah, so. cliche. And so my middle name is Daniela, okay. right? So just to be creative, you know, I, I got my, my middle name and I started mixing the letters up, like putting letters in different orders, orders and, and and I saw Eladani and I'm like, mm. yeah, that sounds pretty good, sounds you know. Really nice. After like four or five beers down with my <laughs> best friend, we're just like, hey, that one's good. So, um, in the four eyes represent my four brothers. Mm. Um, the protectors, right? Basically, yeah. Um, they've been there since like day one with my paintings, you know. <laughs> so it's. Basically, it's my name, representing family representing too. Family. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Mm. Well, I'm glad that you know so far you you're still pushing yourself into now not so much as just keeping it with your family, but showing us showing half of the world i would say because uh, with social media now everybody has a hold of it yeah i mean you could right. you could transport it to japan you could transport it to central america you know and and everybody's going to be part of part of this you know growing right. process of yours right mm -hmm. um but for my next question would be um uh, right it's um are you you were talking about your friend right and you also um mentioned that um outside of camera um, that your friend has a, a it's, it's an event that she's part of oh, yeah. called the Concha Con. The Concha Con. So yeah. um, it all started with a vendor that I met mm -hmm. in, I believe is in San Diego. Okay. And uh, we went to, uh, I believe it's called the Cultura Fest. Okay, nice. Uh, we were invited by, my best friend and I were invited to go sell our art. Right. And like very last minute, so, and you know, San Diego's not like across the street, you right, know, no, so we were like, like a, thinking that's about like a it. Four, four hour, three hour drive. Um, I think it was like around two, two almost hours? three. Okay. And um, we got invited to go and sell. It was a, a brewery, mm. brewery, and um, they, were, they had people selling a whole bunch of art. Not and just beer, right? <laughs> it, it was, yeah, it was beer, art, it was food. Right. Um, so we met a lot of artists there okay. and very friendly people. And one of them, she makes like homemade candles. So she hit us up one right. day on Instagram and she's like, hey, I'm going to do this Concha Con event in Downey, right. um, July 1st, I believe, or right. 2nd. And um, do you guys want to be part of it? So we're like, yeah, you know, like right. we're, Why not? we're always open to those events. and. Mm. Um, it's basically, they're gonna like represent the concha, you know, like what you eat with your cafecito right. in the morning. And then people that don't know much about the, the Hispanic like, culture, concha, it's a, it's a type of bread, a pastry, which mm -hmm. is, um, has a sugar coated on top, bread on the bottom. Also, uh, the, the drinks that, you know, you, you, pro you provide with them, it's either coffee, you know, your tea, mm -hmm. your, but for the most part, it's, it's a pastry, it's a traditional pastry that most of our culture or our Hispanic culture knows so deeply about. And the people that don't, you, you could find it at your local bakery if so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? True. So uh, that's the Concha Con. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually planning to paint some conchas. I, my, I was telling my best friend, I was like, I don't have anything to do with conchas. So she's like, just draw conchas in space. I'm like, hey, I'll be the first one sending right. conchas to space probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you want to check that out, it's um, in Downey. Downey. It's going to be... You're going to update us a, more about it? Yeah, it's going to okay. be like in a, I think, I believe in a lounge. So there's going to be beer as well. So, um, so you want to you, you tell the audience, is there an address? An address? Um, right? I know there's an address, but 
I completely forgot. But what right she's now. trying to do, I think, is um, the more we follow her, the more we keep updated yeah. on her, she'll let us know more about hey, the whole. But right now, there's like a thousand people watching, so you might want to put it out there too. <laughs> you know the streets, <laughs> like grab La, my phone. La Firestone, or what? Um, no. You know, it's probably if you guys are familiar. Did you send with us a Downey? flyer? Huh? Did you send it on the flyer? Did you? Yeah, I believe. Okay, I yeah, did. you should be on okay. there later. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So. If you guys want to head over, it's going to be like, I believe, like 11 artists, 11, 11 local artists or from what I know, they're mostly females. Oh, that's female that's, artists. They're that's local artists, too. All right. They're from the L.A., probably from the L.A. district, probably. L.A. district, basically. Yeah, All right. that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, a female event, um, how I put it, being run by local artists, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's an improvement of just having having a just uh, male dominant, you know, society well too, mm -hmm. right? But going back to the artwork, what we have is, how long have you been painting for and what kind of medium do you use? Okay, painting, I uh, would say 10 plus years. 10 plus years, okay. Yeah, before that it was just pen and pencil, you know. Um, the mediums, I would say just the golden high flow acrylics with um, the, what's it called? These are professional watercolor um, Windsor and Newton. Okay. Yeah, they're, they come in these little things. Okay. And, um, but before I started using that, I would go straight for like the regular oval, like watercolor. Crayola, watercolors. Yeah, like these. <laughs> like these have been so helpful. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I only had, you know, a little bit of money to spend on, on art. As, before I start selling it. And for people know? like, like you said, um, for people that can, can um, write a hand, get, get these uh, well-known brands, starting off with uh, Crayola, you know, like, watercolors mm -hmm. is is that like a how would i put it um is that a training technique or yeah. or should most most people try you know and practice with the with the with the bigger um, brands or do you want them to how would you i would explain? actually recommend starting with like the cheapest thing that you could get in the art sh uh, art shop um i mean sometimes you don't even know what you're gonna do if, right. you're, if you're gonna like it and you probably already spent like 30 bucks on it, right. you know? So that cost me like around eight bucks. I got like the cheapest paper um, book for like another eight bucks. Right. And I just grab like the cheapest brush and I started practicing from there. Right. You know, I was just mixing colors and practicing, see what happens, you know? And then through that, you know, I, I thought my skills were getting better. So I wanted to improve, improve in yeah. my, in my, and, and that's when you push yourself to uh, try now with, with mm -hmm. the bigger brands, right? Or with the right. name brands, the name <laughs> brands, the most expensive <laughs> ones. Brand, right. Yeah. And throughout my journey with them, I, um, I met these really cool golden high flow acrylics, um, a guy in, I think it was at Blix art shop. Okay. Yeah. Is that, you, your, is that your art store that you like to go to? Uh, Blix, yeah. Blix uh -huh. is one of them. Okay, so a shout out to Blix, you know. Yes, a, or Raw Materials here in uh -huh. downtown LA. Um, so yeah, he introduced me to that. He's like, try it, you're gonna like uh -huh. it. I was like, sure. And um, yeah, so started with white, just the white high cro uh, acrylic. And then from there it went to the magenta and then I started grabbing different colors to see, you know. Experimenting more. Experimenting, yeah. That's so that's good. how I got this little setup right here. <laughs> this, honestly, this is all I use. Right, and as, yeah. in, as in for brushes, you know, some people ask, you know, like you said, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of brush you use. Mm -hmm. Or do you have more, more of a flow with the, with the regular brushes that come with the Crayola uh, brush set? Or do you um, push yourself to use I, uh, acrylic brushes, watercolor brushes, or oil brushes? Cause I know there's there's different a ones, different yeah. ones, right? For the for some of the people that don't know about brushes, there's mm -hmm. three type of brushes. There's the acrylics, the um, the watercolor brushes, and the oil brushes. The oil brushes, right? right. So, um, like I said before, I used to do the oils, you know. So I had a lot of oil brushes, 
So I would just I would use those to start, oh, okay. you know. But they weren't so great because right. it's a different medium. Different, so, different um, texture on the hair too as well. Right? Yeah. So I started changing it. I mean, this is all like self-taught. So I didn't ask anybody like, right. hey, what do you use for <laughs> this medium? What do you use for that? So basically, I started going to like the cheapest section of the brushes. And I would just be like, I could use this one, you know, or I could use this one too. Right. And then with, within my art, um, I started noticing that I needed a thicker brush or a bigger brush. And then that's when I started picking up different brush colors or brush sizes. Okay. But basically anything that you're comfortable with can help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like every day, everyday home items like a tape, you know, tape, you know, to put hold down, things the, down. Hold, the, hold things down. Yeah. A plastic cup, you know, you don't even have to use like a like a, a actual nice cup, looking, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> because true. nowadays uh, they they're selling all of this stuff, you know, like mm. they're selling um, the container where you where you carry your art supplies. Right, you could carry them in a regular pencil case, yeah, right? Or pencil like pack. me, I put it in a bag, a regular <laughs> canvas bag, and just have them there. Travel it. pack. <laughs> but so far, um, I would say you letting us know a little bit more on the backstory of your artwork and yourself and how you feel about you know just these creative spaces like you just you mentioned the art walk are there any more creative spaces that you that you attend to that in case some of the the audience or some of our followers want to purchase no, your I've, artwork or so um so i'm mostly in the downtown la art walk which uh -huh. is the second thursday of every month right, it starts now. like around 6 p.m to 10 p.m Okay. I'm always there. That's like that's my first art walk. Okay. So it's like it's your like home. It's my home right. to me, you know. Um, <laughs> I've met so many people there that I feel like oh, many artists that would set up near me. Oh yeah. So um, hopefully they're watching. You know. The, hopefully they and, are. And right? uh, <laughs> hopefully they come here one day. But uh, that's that's my favorite spot to go to. Right. Um, I've been to the one in Montebello. That one I believe is every third Saturday. Okay. of the month mm -hmm. and um, which one else have I been to so Montebello the East LA on the East LA one or local LA, one yeah <laughs> here really in, close but then Boyle Heights right yeah. by the Mariachi Plus yeah. is it um, it's somewhere no it's some no, 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 no you don't want to get that wrong yeah you get, oh, you get the East LA <laughs> one I pissed off everybody in Boyle Heights. At, at Boyle Heights it's uh the East LA one it's right there a little past El, Mar El Mercadito mm -hmm. it's like a block from there right okay okay the like Boyle Heights first, one, right? I'm working on getting that together right here on Whittier and Soto. So okay, so stay tuned, audience. Yeah. You know, we're going to have ah, our own special art walk. art walk. And so any other and, art, um, artists out there, like she, she mentioned, whoever, you know, wants to participate. Yeah, pretty much anybody like that's been on the Esculax, who's a bender, they're all welcome. So that's it'll be good. right here so you guys know. All right, so okay. if any, any questions or so, DM us and let us know. All right, but back <laughs> to our artists <laughs> at hand. <laughs> so um, what other... I've been to one in San Diego. Um, I've shown my art there. There's, I believe, <coughs> that's what I remember f so far right now. And then the one in Downey. Downey, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, and tomorrow there's going to be one in UCLA. Okay, UCLA, you're going to yeah, be there. Uh, and how do you, too. how do most artists go about it? Like, is it is it a free event as in, Anybody um, could set up, or is it a prerequisite? Like you have to talk to a director or somebody that. Yeah, it has to do with that too. Sometimes on Instagram, people um, that are doing these events, they they put like a post. We're looking for vendors. We're looking for artists. You know, whoever wants to do this, um, send us an email, stuff like that. So you have to, you know, do that part too. You right. have to reach out to them. Reach out to them. Um, I've actually been reached out to. You know, doing all these art walks, I've met a lot of artists. Right. It's kind of like a network thing. It's pretty hey, awesome. That's good, right? You and know? How, how do you feel about that? That's one of the other questions that I wanted to ask mm -hmm. most of the artists here that, that come about. Um, how, do, how do you feel about a community that's doing, that it's not so much buying into corporations, into corporate stuff, but mm -hmm. doing more hands-on artwork through, through artists themselves, like um, fashionistas, you know, designers, mm -hmm. uh, artists, uh, performers, uh, everybody that has a some sort of artistic right. ability um, to 
be part of this, you know, growing nature. Like now, like you said, there's an East LA art walk, a downtown mm -hmm. art walk, a Highland Park art walk, a Downey, a Long Beach, you Montevideo. know, there, there's, there's so yeah. many art, art places where local artists that don't have money or don't have a facility or don't have right. a studio, but still want to sell, show their art, show their art or exactly. show what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, these, these events opening up, are, are they a positive role within the community or how do you um, think people should appre appreciate them a little so more? So I actually really appreciate that um, these art walks are coming up. Uh, it really helps, you know, giving an artist that is rarely starting to put their art out there, um, to show more people, to give, get a, a broader audience. Right. You know, it's not easy to just stay in one city or one location like the downtown art walk how i started yeah. um i wanted you know more people to see it you know mm -hmm. and from there uh, by word like oh have you heard of this one you got to go to that one right. you know and um that's how it came to be and there's there's been like really small events where i've been invited to um and it all started because i i met the the vendor at an art walk right and you know you you become real cool friends like you know you, you guys are both hustling trying to mm -hmm. get your art out there right. and then they remember you you know and they're like hey you know i remember we met at the east la art walk do you want to come to this event I'm right like, yeah sure you know um so that's how it is it's not just it's a network but you you make really good friends out of good that friends too out of it. plus yeah. you um you learn from most of the artists there right yeah exactly you, you learn you definitely learn you learn the the struggle too, you know, right. like trying to get out there. Nowadays, it's it's not so much as how how you much exposure you get, but how do you get the exposure? Like you right. know how how you're networking, if you're communicating with the artists at hand, or you're just uh, doing it virtually, you know, through mm. through emails, through sending information to galleries. Because that was that was back in the days. You know, you would send a portfolio online. You would make a portfolio, yeah. send it to somebody, or show it to somebody before you could you show mm. your artwork. But this is in this in this sense, the art walks are are a live portfolio for every artist out there that wants to put their artwork out there. Right. right? That's, that's good. That's true. I've actually done one. Um, show the chocolate and art like that's the first one i've ever had my art like in, in. in like the actual i guess um gallery okay you know but good, i mean it wasn't the best i would say right. for me but it was my first time i didn't right. even make it out <laughs> I, I actually just had my art be there i i wasn't able to make it right i was out of state at that time but right. it, it kind of it's I didn't like it as much as just one or two days I was there. Um, you don't get to pick where your, your art's going to be displayed. <laughs> right. you know, when Someone I, else already does it yeah. for you, right? And then it I, when I went to see, um, when I went to see how it was displayed, it was kind of like, you know, it a really small section. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was cool that I was being part of that. Right. But um, being able to do the art walks, you're able to display your art how you want. You know, you put the art that you want. Um, there, you, you only get to pick like three or four pieces. Um, but it's cool. You still get a really cool audience and feedback out of it. Right. So. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So now that you, like you said, now that you made your Instagram, you have your handle. Uh, has more people reached out to you as as in trying to learn your process? learn how you came about it or mm -hmm. even just fans out there that like your artwork or yeah. are reposting it. How, did, how um, do you feel about that now? You so know, because you said the critics that you had at home were just your brothers and your parents, yeah. you know, friends. And friends. Right. So um, going through the art walks, obviously I've met a lot of people um, and a lot of people have bought my art and they they say really nice things about it. Like they tell me how they feel towards it. Like they have a connection. Oh, no. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, when they tell me the connection that they have, it's it's pretty amazing how, you know, I, I created that piece, but then it, it touches people, mm -hmm. you know? So I never saw that. So when I first started seeing that, how people would relate to it or um, how they feel attached to it, it's, it's like, it's pretty awesome. 
to know that. So from there, a lot of people would buy my art and they'll, they'll give me a shout out on Instagram and I'll get followers out of that too. So that was pretty cool. And um, not that long ago, I remember uh, in the downtown art walk, mm -hmm. I had a couple of people come up to me and they're like, hey, like they were so happy to see me. It was so that's, funny, that's, like right. it was different. You didn't even know that they, no, you didn't like, even know. Hey, um, I follow you on Instagram. I like your artwork. I'm your fan. I was like, what? I have fans. <laughs> That's right. so cool. Right. You know? So, um, I never knew that, you know, picking up a brush and painting what I had in head, like in my mind, I mean, um, <laughs> like would bring so many cool vibes. Or some, so much positive. And positivity, and you right. know? Like, sometimes you need that. You know, you as need an that artist, cool, uh, like pat in the back, like, hey, good job. Right, because you know? as an artist, we, how I put it, we struggle every day just to put whatever we have, you know, like you said, in, in, in our heads, in our hearts, or just mm -hmm. trying to put an idea out there on a piece of paper and then hoping somebody would appreciate it, you know. Right. So it's just, it's, it's like a whole growing nature, and that's good, you know, that's in a sense that everybody needs that pat on the back right everybody yeah. needs that that good that good you know good love right? yeah but um so today you're gonna you're gonna help us out and have our audience you know stay tuned in to a live painting, to a painting you know yeah, so painting you know for you guys. so you're gonna you know you're gonna give us something back as as what we watch and you know see your you know your your just uh your process you know mm -hmm. your whole experiment of putting love and universe into into a piece of paper right. that isn't just a piece of paper anymore once it's done yeah i mean it's it's, different. it's an artwork you know right. it's it's something something you left behind right Correct. so uh, we're gonna have you do a live painting um we're gonna st we're gonna know a little bit more on on how in depth you know the the whole process is cool. because it's not just something we talk about but it's something we see too as well right yeah so you're gonna see oh you guys you, you guys finished the interview? Or? Yeah, I think. Well, the I mean, the next thing that we gotta do is she's gonna tell us a little about her artwork or okay. just kind of. Okay. Let's go. Because the audience wants to know. Okay. You see, uh, if you got the monitor, like I'll go through it like every minute or so. Okay. You wanna comment on them? So start with this one that I have. Okay, so this one, the whole concept of the mountains, um, it all started. I was in Photoshop class. Mm -hmm. And I had finished my assignment, and that class is like five hours. Right. So I had like, I think an hour to spare before uh -huh. I could leave. And uh, our Mac computers had this really cool background of like these mountains. So I, I got my sketchbook out, and I started sketching the mountains. You know, I was uh -huh. so bored. You right, know? yeah, exactly. As an artist, you're going to draw whatever right. you, you see. Right, you can't stop yourself. Yeah, so <laughs> I started sketching that. And before the mountains came in, I would just do... Um, planets just that just two planets and the stars and that's it okay, so i noticed how i love how the the mountains came out with all the line works too so i was like what if i put the mountains and the planets and the stars together right you know kind of like in a it has a name to it a aurora beam kind of thing you know? yeah like, like just, the aurora yeah, yeah something like that um so that's how the mountains came to to be in my art it all started for a photoshop class that i was so bored in all right that's and cool. i i think that's like my favorite thing everybody loves the mountains you know i have people like they tell me like it reminds me of when i was in montana or it reminds me of when i was in a hiking know, trip or a hiking trip yeah um, so i was like oh that's cool you know like people can relate to something that i did in in a sketch, right? You know, That's good. they could place themselves in, yeah. in that in that universe that you're right. playing. So, that's the pink mountain that I have there. Like, um, it all started with working with my magenta acrylic. Um, yeah. I loved how it came out. Like, it was it just popped out from a black background. Right. Also, the black background. Um, I never wanted to do that. I never wanted to just do a black universe even right. though like if you look up you know you don't Sometimes really see all see those stars. cool vivid colors that i put you just see the stars and a dark blue sky right due to a, con a pop uh, pop 
pollution, right? Right. So we don't get to see all those cool stuff out there here in LA. But um, when I once I started doing that, like you can tell, like the death, like the, the reality that we see here with like a really cool, beautiful mountain. I mean, yeah, mountain with the moon. So that's how the black background came. Okay. So it wasn't it wasn't a mistake. <laughs> no, like when I saw it, I was like, "Hey, I actually like this." Right. No, um, but that's good. Yeah, I mean, like just changing it up. And now on this one, we were seeing that this you're one. doing so, faces now, right? Yeah. So um, before, I would just sketch friends. You know, I would just sketch them with pen and pencil and marker. And um, once again, I hit that wall where I was like, "What else can I paint?" Right. with the stars you know yeah. and I remembered the first sketch that I first did with my friend uh, with his face I was like why don't I just sketch my friends and, and the, the stars as well so this one is it's it's not a real person okay. that one just um, happened to be I just made sketched up. it yeah I made, I made up. up one um, I wanted like a very strong female character in right. my art and um, right now she's like my my signature character. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So I wanted someone fierce. Uh, I I put the fangs so she looks like a vampire. <laughs> um, so I can, is I I was trying to get like don't mess with me. But still like and like, like me. Kind yeah. Of thing. Don't mess with me. I'm strong. I'm, I'm beautiful. Like a very powerful independent, female. Independent. Independent female. Okay. So that's. That's how that one came to be as well. It's one of my favorite pieces. And actually. then adding the universe, I would say it adds on to the independence because a universe is something that you can you can't control. You can't you can't right. just put it in a jar and say this is this is the universe. No, it's mm -hmm. it's vast. It's it's, huge. it's adventurous too. You know, it it's is. something something you you just can't. It's like a mystery out there. All right. So same with the woman, right? Yeah. So I kept on sketching um, different different females or women and um, I'll put like their own character in it you know mm -hmm. some look like they're sad some look scary some look approachable <laughs> you know so there's right. different characters in the girls I make okay um, so that's why some of them look different you know and then some of them have the universe feel to it either on their hair on the background uh -huh. right yeah it, I always try to put the universe in there that's with good. them Mm -hmm. And um, and then the the one the that's next following one, is that the, one. So that one I saw on Instagram. I forgot her Instagram name, but she was sitting down like that, and um, she was sitting. I think she was like in her her bathroom. I think okay. in her bathtub. She was sitting down like that, right. and I actually liked the way she looked. Okay, that's another thing I I like to do. Like if I see that I could, if I like the the, the pose. The or... pose. Um, and I'm like, I could draw that. So I start sketching them, and somehow I try to incorporate like the the universe and the planets in there. Right. That's yeah. Cool. So that's how that one came to be. <laughs> no, but the, they're excellent pieces. Um, the fact that you have her sitting on the moon and looking at the universe, it states that she's on the moon. You right. Know what I mean? It's not that she's looking at from earth up to the skies and no it's mm -hmm. she's already at her high peak right, right. it's okay. like you know it's, it's everybody needs that place to just Mellow. sit down and chill and just just look up in the stars and right and your your place is you chose the moon right yeah that's the feeling so. you thought then now this piece is actually um pretty funny story okay. um because <laughs> I like she's my character that I like to paint. Um, so is this a little bit about you too as well in the yeah, character? Yeah, like okay. within the character, you know. Um, I drew her facing this guy, right? Right. And I looked at it and I was like, everybody's gonna say they're gonna be in love or they yeah. look like they're in love, they're in love right? Love. I don't know if, if when you saw it, like, <laughs> do you think that they're in love or something or? I felt like they, they right? were. Kind of. it, it reminded me, um, I don't know if a lot of the audience have seen the movie Across the Universe. Right. Okay, that's what it, that's what it brought that's to it me. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't want that. Oh. I was like, no, I cannot forget how the female artist that, I mean, the character that I made 
like you I lose herself into it. Yeah, just, like, like no, yeah. she's independent. She's strong. She doesn't need. Right. She doesn't need anyone. So <laughs> I made up a story saying that they met at a coffee shop, and no, the the guy asked her out to a coffee, mm-hmm. and she's like, no, um, I only drink blood because obviously she's a vampire. A vampire. And she killed him at the end. Uh oh. So <laughs> I didn't right. want it to be like a love story. Okay. So, I mean, some people will probably see it that way, but. But since you said this character, it's 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 a, it's like a persona of you. Um, mm. How do you feel about it, her, stating that to, to the to the opposite sex, to the male, to the male character? Is that what mm. is that your your approach as well as, to to that to that audience, or do mm. you feel like? It's okay to have somebody or or just your character itself, it's just independent? No, I mean, to everyone. Um, I feel like everybody should be independent sometimes. They don't need someone to, to advance in their life, mm-hmm. you know? And um, for the character that I made her, right. um, not that one, but the previous, <laughs> the previous one, one. Um, it's just I wanted to show a strong female, you know. Some some females try to they get in a relationship and it doesn't work out and they they fall, right? right? Um, I just want to put out there like you don't you don't always need a person, a partner next to you. It doesn't have to be a guy, you know, but a girl too, and um, just a strong persona, just right. somebody that could you know guide you or help out, yeah. you know. Right, that's good. Uh, and then for the next one, you, next you played one. around with the curls. You played around with yeah, w- so with this, the with the whole face structure, right? Like right. So this one, she's real. She's actually um, a real person. I mm-hmm. uh, forgot her Instagram name too, but I saw her right. uh, through my Instagram, and um, I thought she was really beautiful. And her her hair too. I never. Actually, this will be the second one that I draw with curls. Okay. And it was it was a challenge. It was a challenge. So right? I like I love to challenge myself. So that's why I made her because okay. I thought she was really pretty. <laughs> I was like, she yeah, because like, like the bone structure, you mm. know, just the the attitude in the face. It it just it speaks out, right? Yeah. That's good. Even to this one, like I've improved a lot in my sketches with with um watercolor oh, the second one right don't worry. she's wearing a dress or or no, just this, this one. one oh this one this one's actually i think it's like one of the best ones i've done so far through like the whole um sketches that i've done with other girls right. with my watercolor okay like i've improved so do you prefer you know um uh i how do you put it models that already have a picture or do you or do you wish to venture it out and have actual live models and for you to sketch them out um i would actually like i like both Both. so when i sketch someone is because like i said like i like the pose that they have and um and i go from there or you know there's some people that want to be sketched and they ask me like do I take a picture of you? I mean, of myself, or do you want me to be there? You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, no, just just take a picture of your best angle, okay. basically, and I'll go from there. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> and like this one right here, uh, really cool girl. I seen her on Instagram too. They're all mostly come from Instagram. <laughs> um, she was laying down like in a really, I think she was laying down in a uh, like a blanket. Okay. And I loved, like, again, the pose that she had. So mm-hmm. I had to paint her. Like, oh, nice. it looked super cool. I was like, this is gonna look super awesome. Like, you know, just chilling in space. You right. know, just, just laying there. You was know, she was she eating something? Did she have? Something? No, she had. I think a, a flower. Oh, okay. She had a flower, a flower on, on her on, on her, her mouth. head. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's that's why I painted her. Mm. And that one. Um, there's some girls I don't paint with eyes. Okay. Like that one doesn't have eyes. Right. Or the pupil. Um, Is there a meaning to not having eyes? Um. Yeah. No. It was kind of like an experiment. So before I uh, I paint them in, I, at mm. the end I do the eyes. Okay. And um, to some of them I actually liked how it looked without the eyes. Right. It looked very scary. You know, <laughs> I like that theme very gothic like. Scary because it looking. has a choker, it has yeah. the, the hoops, the curls, the tongue, yeah. and then the eyeliner, right? 
So I really liked it. Like it looks super awesome. It's a really cool style. That that's good. That I saw. That's actually how she looks like, like in the picture. <laughs> Just like she. Well, she did have eyes, but right. um, she had that attitude. <laughs> she had that attitude. That's I good. It was that's beautiful. good. So if any any viewers or you know some of our audience that want to be part of this, you know, her artwork will send us your picture. I guess right. Yeah. Send her Send her a DM. Send her DM a picture me. of yourself, and <laughs> and then uh, that way she you'll be one of the lucky people that would you know have their their sketch or their drawing of themselves drawn up and you know have a Space. universe background right yeah <laughs> who wouldn't want that it'd be so cool um those are events that are coming up soon the ones that you're going to be part of yeah right? so ucla downtown art walk that one's actually made by my best friend so i told her if i could steal her her little schedule she's like yeah go for it because we always do the same art walks her and i so um there's the the concha con on i think it's called the epic lounge oh the epic lounge right there. epic lounge yeah so if you could google epic lounge and down you'll you'll get the address you'll find it for (laughs) sure (laughs) and then um the first one's in ucla the second one uh downtown art walk it's like between fourth and 6th Street on Spring. Mm-hmm. And then, I can't read the other one. Oh, Montebello Art Walk. Um, I forget what. Is that KTCA? Yeah, the yeah. KTC, what is it? Keeping the Culture Alive. Keeping the Culture Alive, uh-huh. yeah. Mm, Pretty nice. cool guy that made that. Um, he, it's like a new art walk. Okay. It's very, it's like, it's in baby steps, okay. but I've seen it. I've been there, I think, three times. So you, it, you heard, the, like, the backstory to it, so you know what, what it could become, right? Yeah, it's going to be big. I mean, I, I know for sure, because every time I go, there's more artists, okay. which is, like, right. super awesome, you know? <laughs> like, I love how artists are coming out of their shells and showing what they have, you know, in store. Right, because, yeah. um, now, like I said, uh, today's uh, society um, doing stuff DIY you know side hustles you know your hobbies your your um, your sense of just doing outside performance everything mm-hmm. that, that the community didn't see as uh, a living style is a living style now yeah you know I mean mm-hmm. like doing your own clothes you know uh, if you go out and and for instance you know you modify a shirt because you like it or you want to keep it right it's new artwork you know what I mean there's mm-hmm. no sense of saying art art has has just been halted just to a piece of paper but right. it's more than that you know it's just mm-hmm. communicating it's being involved or taking a picture or or sending in information you know via uh, media or just you know within friends but something like that uh, pushes a lot of the artists out there to to venture out and put right. out their artwork right put their stuff out there that's yeah. good that's good but um, today, like I said, we're going to have our painting live. Uh, Before that, do you have any shout outs? Yeah. You can shout oh, them shout out. Outs, right? um, shout outs. I want to give a shout out to... Who's watching? Who are you talking? You know? I hope everybody that said that we're going to watch are watching. <laughs> right. So, there was got a, sidetracked because it said 4 o'clock. There was right? a small thing in the beginning. If they right. caught that and they told you, they'll tell you about it, then that's how you know they're watching. Right. Right. So, uh, my f- best friend, Sandra, Hopefully you're watching this. Um, my my brothers and um, friends, everybody. I can't really name everybody. Oh, Mom I can, and dad. but you know we're on a schedule. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Mom and dad, it. dog, whatever. Um, <laughs> Not you, Fifi. Not and you. Fifi, you know she's been sleeping through the whole thing, but I know. But she she's listening. Art. She's listening, right? <laughs> she's participating. Um, Everybody that I've met at the art walks, you know, everybody at the Concha Con, the UCLA one, you know, um, hopefully you guys are watching. Oh, and um, let us know your handle again. Your Instagram. Oh, Eladani. 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 This how it sounds. Eladani with four eyes at the end. All right. Four so eyes. for the audience that is still staying tuned that didn't catch the first part she, she said her instagram again mm-hmm. follow her um keep track of follow. her adventures in her art process yeah. and as well our main host he's coming in just to say a couple words but uh, i was just gonna tell you that uh, yeah we're gonna take a second to set up and then okay, okay. we'll see how uh, 
goes. what the process is to right. our work. So in the meantime, can they see like a little slideshow of her work? So they, uh, right? And now we're going to cut to the sponsors. Okay, let's just do we that. Hit them, shut up. Uh, All right, sponsors. Let's, All right. Let someone else talk. <laughs> so. Basically, like, we'll be back two minutes. Two minutes. Dos minutos. Para los, pa los que pa hablan no, español, compa, dos minutos. Dos minutos. Estuvimos <laughs> aquí en, platicando sobre el artista. It's all in good. All right, it's all in well. What do you think? Where the night turns into day 